All right, look, I'm going to be preemptive on this. I got to be up front. Brigade, I am going to have almost nothing but just horrible shit to say about this whole thing. Like, it's all garbage. It's just the worst thing ever. But I want to say, it's important for me to put out there, the artist, Marat Michaels, I believe I'm saying his name right, um... I've never heard a negative thing about the artist. Um, never heard a bad thing about him. Uh, seems to be like a decent human being from anything I've ever seen, heard, or read about him. And he has grown to be a pretty good artist. Um, no doubt he's grown and changed and applied himself. His work in this stuff is atrocious. It's just, it's so bad. I guess, I, I mean, I can't blame him. For being, he, um, Rob Liefeld talks about all the time in his podcast how Marat was uh, somebody that helped him, was his buddy, uh, helped him produce his work in, at the Marvel Studios doing the New Mutants and X-Force, things like that, um, driving him, he just helping him in uh, all kinds of different capacities. I can't remember all the exact details, but Liefeld and Marat Michaels were, have been homies, it seems like, for a long time. So once they started up Image, um, Marat would... You know, you know he could. He was helping him draw backgrounds and doing some inking and some shit like that. Yeah, I'm certain that stuff is happening. But he gets with his buddy. Like, I'm starting Image Comics. I think you're ready, man. You're going to get your own series. I'm going to draw it. It's called Brigade, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be awesome. You're going to make a lot of money. Who the hell wouldn't take that job? So I don't begrudge him for taking it, even if he wasn't really up for the task. So, and I think there's a lot of youthful energy, as is the case with a lot of these but just objectively, because I think we're going to look at the entire four-issue miniseries. He gets better as it goes, but it all stays just terrible. It, I mean, I, I haven't looked at these in a long time, and I did a flip through each one of these. I could not believe how bad it was. Like, it's just the worst kind of childish garbage comics that ever came out of... Um, Image Comics. I will say, I don't have them sit. I mean, I've got them tucked away behind me. I did find the first two issues of, this is the miniseries, and then I, I don't know if it's a second miniseries or just it was going to be a continuing series. I don't know how far it went. But, you know, this is Brigade 1 through 4. And then there's another Brigade issue number 1, the regular series. The level of artwork, it's still the same guy. Not This is Liefeld on the cover, but Marat Michaels, who does the artwork on the inside of these. The quality jump was astounding. He got really good by comparison. He still had that Image Comics Extreme Studios kind of ridiculous style that they all did when they do working for Liefeld. But I was shocked looking like he learned and grew at an exponential level. It was incredible. And we'll get to those eventually. But we're going to look at Brigade. Let's look at the covers. The one positive I can give is for all the crap that I can give Liefeld, the intensity of this cover specifically, the only thing that he put any kind of heart and soul into is this guy's face. And I dig it. It's really intense. Like he's staring right at you and kind of making you look at it. You know, you can tell he stops giving his shit down by the, like, oh, he's like, I can't draw lower legs. I spent so much time on this face. I'm just done here. But I kind of like it. This cover, Liefeld again, it's like the bad guy's, he's like he's posing for us. He wants to make sure he's looking at the camera. He's not looking at the guys fighting. This one, I mean, I assume these are all Liefeld, but I don't understand this. You know, that's Danny Meeky on inks, but Paul Scott? I mean, this is Liefeld, right? Unless it's Marat Michaels doing it. I, I don't understand. And then issue four. That's Liefeld. Just the guy standing there with the most ridiculous human proportions you've ever seen. It looks like he's like floating up in the sky because these are clouds and the moon. I don't know. The interesting thing, we're not going to get into it in this one, but this has the story for the last issue of Lung, uh, yeah, Young Blood. I've done issues one, two, and three. We'll do four eventually, but the story is not completed in its own book. It's completed in the back of Brigade. Young Blood number five, not even drawn by Liefeld. So I talked about how his 
Youngblood series just goes nowhere and is completely directionless. He didn't even finish in his own fucking miniseries. Anyway, let's go through these. I don't think it'll take too long per issue, but doing four of them, it might eat up some time. But I, I'm not going to be overly concerned with the story because it's just standard, like bunch of tough anti-heroes with the leader. It's all Cable and X-Force. That's all these are. It's Cables, it's X-Forces, and um, it's not that interesting. I get Now that I look at this, I forget that Liefeld recently did a reissue of Brigade Number no. 1 where he had a bunch of artists redraw various pages from this book, redrew it front to back um, with a whole bunch of different artists. And it actually looks a lot better than this, but of course anything has to look better than this. Excuse me, had to have a drink real quick. Um, I mean, the guy he's running, and he's already adopting Liefeld's pointless lines in the background. It says Malibu, California, but like, forget the text. Where is he? He's nowhere. I'm going to draw a big figure, a big splash page, just do like a line... Yeah, these guys couldn't understand the concept of you got to have an establishing shot to put them in an environment that we know where they're at. It's not a horrible drawing, but it's also terrible. And he has no nipples. I mean, come on. It's okay to draw nipples on your dudes. But he's running. He's jogging. He's thinking to himself about how awesome he is. I don't know. And then just more... Oh, wait. Yeah. Sorry, Brian Murray. Once again, your coloring design sucks. I think this guy's supposed to have a weird skin tone. Probably because I think he's like a walking zombie is what is going on. But this coloring in the background. As far as a double page spread, I he should have had Liefeld if he didn't. He should have had Liefeld give him the layouts. Because this is a poor utilization of a double page spread. Like, my God. It doesn't work. These two are brothers, they're fighting, and then so, Battlestone, right? That's his name. Yeah, Battlestone, former member of Youngblood. He uh, happens upon these two brothers, Seahawk and, um, um, oh my gosh, Cold Snap. Seahawk and Cold Snap are their superhero names. And you got the strong guy. He's Atlas. He can grow in size. He can. He's Maul from Wildcats, except he doesn't get stupid. He gets slower the bigger he gets, but that should make sense. Anyway, the brothers are having a bitch off. And then, but again, no idea of where they're at. Once you get to here, suddenly there's just a random building, I guess. And this girl's up on a porch way high, I guess with a plug-in telephone outside overlooking a beach, I guess. And I used to think this was like an ice wall, but I guess it's supposed to be the ocean. I guess, I think, perhaps. And even from the first time I read this, that girl's pelvis, like her hips, like my God. She's got pants like, these are like those high-waisted jeans that girls would wear back in the 80s and they went out of fashion for a long time they've totally come back but man that is up to her lower rib cage um anyway girls talking um this is thermal guess what her power is um and then this dude ko expert marksman skilled martial artist because of course he is wherever this background is whatever the building is what is, I guess he's coming in a door and he's hunched over. And the perspective on this, like, just think of the camera angle. The camera angle is sitting low enough to be looking straight on at the phone that she's hanging up and looking at her hips. There is no way on the fucking planet you'd be staring straight at his head unless he's three feet tall, which maybe he is. This is the first time we've seen him. He's coming. Look how far up the door. The top of the door is completely out of sight. So maybe K.O., expert marksman and skilled martial artist, he's so tall or so short, and she or she's so tall. She's got a weird mutant hand. But his face is right at ass level. 
So poor composition, poor understanding of um, perspective. Oh, wait, no, he's an expert marksman and skilled martial artist. He's not three feet tall. It was just bad artwork. And then look at this perspective on this door. It's goofy. Like, this is a guy who's brand new, never really had to learn this stuff. So then this guy gets thrown through a freaking window, I guess, because this looks like a balcony, right? There's no glass, right? But now there's glass. And he comes through it. Now, is he in a costume? Man, this guy is pulling all life of tricks. I guess he's in a costume, right? Because he's got this weird coloring. But he draws them with his bare feet. And he did the same thing. It looks like he put his right foot on his left leg. I mean, is he in costume or not? And he got thrown through the magical windows that just appeared. So the brothers are duking it out, causing damage. And of course, Battlestone, who was nowhere to be seen anywhere in here, suddenly all you see of Battlestone putting an end to this fight is just a fist grabbing him out of nowhere, a close-up of his nose and his mouth, and him looking like a, like, a, like a doofus, and then a couple of arms, like, joined at the wrists. Look, I swear to God, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I understand that we all have to start somewhere. And I'm no published professional artist, so fuck me. What do I know besides absolutely nothing? But I have been drawing my own comics for a long time. I do have some understanding. And I challenge you to point out any of this stuff and tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm not. I'm not wrong. These are objectively poor decisions from a guy who's very young and very enthusiastic but doesn't know how to do stuff. I even remember Liefeld saying one time in an interview that if he had any um, regrets or objections to some of the choices he made in his early Image Comics works, and he did say something to the effect of that he might have, if he could go back and redo it again, he might not have some of the artists draw books when they did. Like some of these guys, they were not ready to handle a book. And I think he must be talking about his homie here. Because it's so, storytelling-wise, it's so weird just to see these parts of their arms and to have Battlestone be in this scene, but you never see him. He's not here. He's just a hand and a face, like a, like a nose and a mouth. Like, there's a better way to do this. And then suddenly there is, and look at this, again, this ridiculous color design, giant heads. <laughs> look at this giant head on expert marksman and skilled martial artist. And then, randomly, there's just a dude with a beard? Where did this asshole come from? Stone. Just some dude. Just some dude leans in from another room and just tells him something. So I guess they're all watching something on the floor? Well, he's watching something on the floor. He's staring at us, and he's kind of staring up at the ceiling. Washington, D.C. At least he kind of did a, you know, a background. Got some cars on the same plane. You know, a flat surface. That Liefeld can't do that. Um, something bad is happening. Bad guys, something. They can't find any young blood, so they called in someone else. Who did we call in? Shadowhawk. Awesome. Thanks for showing up, buddy. We need you. Oh. Um, Brigade. Now they're just, they just show up. There. They love to do this background where there's no background. And then Brian Murley just shows in the, throws in these, like, lines of color. So... <clears throat> I probably missed it. Cold Snap, Atlas, Battlestone, Thermal, Expert Marksman, and Skilled Martial Artist, and that girl. What the hell was her name? Can't remember. Oh, and Guy with Pointed Mask, Seahawk, it just didn't even put him in the lineup. It's like they all lined up for a photo op, and Seahawk, he's right there. He's not anywhere else. So, good job, guys. The guy who's addressing the on-site cops or news or whatever, he's not even in the photo op shot. I always thought that this shot of cold snap, the guy who has cold, you know, he can control temperatures, coldness. That's a pretty good angle. It's, it's pretty dynamic. Like, that is a success. I think it works. He ices up the whole building, sealing it off. 
some bad guys in there saying, hey, something, blah, 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 good guys are coming, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and then, I guess, now they all got up to the roof and come crashing in, doing stereotypical Liefeld stuff. Um, I've given Liefeld a lot of shit for his double-page spreads. Sometimes he doesn't care, but sometimes he can really, really nail it. They should have had him do some layouts on this. Like, you need to, like, increase, like, make Battlestone here huge. And then put some of these other guys in the background and make them smaller. Space it out. They're all kind of at the sa exact same distance. And then you got Atlas, the guy who can grow super huge and whatever her name is. So, it's, it's all okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's what I keep telling myself. It'll be okay, Rob. Uh, they fight the bad guys. A uh, skilled marksman and expert martial artist. He's just staring off into nothing. Oh, yeah. Brigade's newest member, Stasis. She has the ability to manipulate ambient kinetic energy. Isn't that like literally a contradiction in terms? Isn't kinetic energy literally energy of things in motion? But it's ambient, like, that's just people getting words and just putting them together. And you think that, I know these are comics and these are 90s comics, but for somebody who can just, like, levitate shit, why don't you give her this, like, stripper swimsuit outfit? It's just kind of embarrassing, except these are 90s comics and all our girls got to look hot. So, <laughs> you see this perspective on this ground, how it's all goofy they're not all standing on the same ground he chose a hard angle and did not exactly nail it i guess she's got the bad guys frozen in space so expert marksmen and skilled martial artists can punch this guy and battlestone can deck this guy while looking off to the side some some dude walks up got a gun stasis behind you put your mind at ease stone this scumbag ain't gonna lay a hand on our precious little stasis so seahawk Charging in with his pointy hat, grabs a bad guy. Good for him. Very heroic. But Stasis, so she's the new person. Um, kind of okay. Not a bad drawing right there. Um, I guess he's flow. Okay, yeah. He grabs him because you can't tell by the storytelling because storytelling doesn't exist here anywhere. He took this bad guy outside. So you could tell like this is like a long shot perspective outside of the window um, of the building that should have been covered in ice because that's what they did. And there should be like cops and news vans and streets and other buildings. But nope, there, none of that's there. Just this. And he just drops him to his death. Like, all right. Battlestone's a little pissed only because there's other news people out there to see even though you don't see them. And expert marksman and skilled martial artist gives an elbow to this guy here. Another dude gets out a gun, but then he gets blasted in the back. Thermal, guess what her powers are, blasts him in the back. Hey, that's what being part of a team is all about. Couldn't agree more, Thermal. We just murdered a bunch of people. We're cool. I mean, they are bad guys. <clears throat> and then meanwhile, stupid Atlas, the big guy, I guess he's just been standing around outside. Just kind of like wishing he could do anything. So, I guess he lifts some people in here. This is his hand bringing some people in. They're talking about whatever. And while they're just bullshit and wasting time, they just happen to catch a glimpse of somebody running down the stairs. So he does this weird contortion and jump, twist, flies down to this guy, dives on him, tucks and rolls. Okay, he maybe has a bomb or something like that. And then suddenly they're standing and posing. Um, he's like, Battlestone's like, you, you have a bomb. Where's your, where's the bomb? He's like, I don't have one. I am the bomb. So then this is, <laughs> this is Marat Michaels kind of employing some Rob Liefeld type heavy shading and cross hatching in a way that he doesn't understand why it works or how to do it. That looks really weird. It doesn't fit the scene at all. Anyway, this guy's a bomb. I guess he's going to blow himself up because that's what you do. Badoom, big explosion, big colors, all the heroes, like, I, weren't they in the building? Did they get out? I guess they did. So the building itself shears in half because there it is covered in ice and slams onto the ground. 
Badoom Crash. That's kind of okay. This page, I guess it works. <clears throat> oh my God, there's no way it could have survived that. And then from under the rubble, Battlestone pulling himself out so he could survive an entire building crashing down on him. And then this is Marat and Scott. Who the fuck is this Scott? Oh, Paul Scott on inks. All right. Never heard of that guy. This looks 100% like a Liefeld drawing. Like, I bet you Liefeld drew this and then let Marat go over the top of it. I don't know. I could be wrong, but this looks like Rob Liefeld to a T. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty good use of a, the you know, a big double page spread. As always, they can't be bothered to draw a fucking hand. I sort of did a thumb over there, he said, but I can't do one over here. I'm done. So just lining it out. So that kind of works. That's kind of dramatic and powerful for a couple of characters you don't give a shit about. And then it cuts to some bad guy. His name is Genocide, and he wants to turn and look at you. He's like, hey, look at me. I'm awesome. I'm going to be a super awesome bad guy. I bet he's going to be one of the most memorable villains you've ever, you know, ever seen. Sorry, I'm looking at this. Liefeld's talking about... He's like, Liefeld's saying, you know, I'm going to do Brigade, but I can't do it. I'm, I can't draw it. I'm doing Youngblood. So I've enlisted uh, Marat Michaels and Paul Scott. Marat started out as my assistant way back in 86. And I can't say enough about him. Uh, I will say this. Keep an eye on him. He is uh, the first image rookie, and I can assure you there are big things ahead for this talented artist. So, yeah, this is the... I guess, I guess they're saying that this is the first book put out by Image Comics, not by, done by the Image Founding Fathers. So that's a big thing. That's a big deal. It probably sold millions of copies and a lot of money to be made. Marat Michaels was not up to the challenge. Um, every good pencil, behind every good penciler, there's an equally talented inker. Um, Marat's fellow image rookie, Paul Scott. Paul first started working with me while I was still doing X-Force for Marvel. Paul's more or less the house inker here at Extreme, and with Marat, you can expect big things from both of them. So... All right, you know, I like that he's putting his, his homies to work. Like, respect. So, that's a pretty shit issue one. How much more shit can we get? Issue two, genocide. He's looking at us. Does this guy even remotely look like... Like, this guy doesn't have a nose. I think he had started drawing Bad Rock and then just forgot. Nose, no nose. Good job, everybody. This also, this was put out in August of 92. October of 92. So a couple months in between. You know, I still don't like Brian Murray's coloring, but this kind of works. You know, they drew a flying saucer here. Kind of cool. You know, I'm kind of okay with it. I think, like I've said, Marat Michaels, he gets better in these leaps and bounds. He'll regress, but he, you know, it's not bad. This is not a bad opening, opening page. But we got to have Genocide. Brigade, I am Genocide. I wear a ridiculous outfit. I wear a pointy plastic diaper with a cod piece fight me i dare you fight me eh he says oh brigades on the scene because of course they are standing on a pile of rubble i think that marat forgot <laughs> it rhymes to uh, he's got Atlas's body here, but then like his leg is just sort of colored in. I think he just forgot to draw it. Not a great double splash page, not horrible. It's good amateurish work. It's bad pro work. Screamy face. Why does he have a little skull right on his forehead? It's so stupid. That's just dumb. But big bad guys, so now we gotta fight. So <laughs> 
you know, big double page thing. This almost looks like a like a spin on X Men number the end of number one and a beginning of number two with Jim Lee with Magneto up front and the X-Men in the background, except like not good. But then there's just this like, how far apart are these guys? Like they're way far apart, but he's jumping at him and he just bitch slaps him. And he's like, you know, get off me, man. I'm a pimp. I'm going to shoot you with my laser. So he blasts stasis here. I guess it didn't hurt her. And then suddenly he's just a, a giant fist is holding him. Bad storytelling. Blast him in the face. And so Atlas falls into a building, I guess. An arrow smacks up against his head. So all the team is taking their, you know, taking a shot. Jumps at him, gets smashed, gets picked up, gets knocked over. Arrow to the head. Not a bad drawing of, you know, expert marksman and skilled martial artist with his bow and arrow, but can't Shaft be the only guy with a bow and arrow that doesn't have strings? You know, it's some kind of like magnetically propelled super technology bow and arrow that Shaft has. Does he have the same thing? It's stupid. But, so he's pointing an arrow, but then bad guys, did he grow to be a giant? Because it looks like they're standing right by each other. I think this is just supposed to be the bad guy in the extreme foreground. He slams his hands down and in the background distance knocks him off his feet. His bow and arrow is suddenly gone. It's just not there. <clears throat> and then he's just tucked away into the rubble and Marat didn't know what to do with the background so he just kind of had smoke there because smoke always works. Blast of heat. Thermal. Because he, he yells at Thermal. Says something, then Battlestone shows up, knocks him in his ass, punches him with a big color fist. We don't crumble easy. We don't crumble as easily as these skyscrapers we're knocking over genocide. <clears throat> Civilians be damned. I don't know what's going on here. Government stooges talking about shit. I'm sure they're talking about how horrible all these superheroes are. Um... This background is just laughably atrocious. I mean, look at that street curving into the giant, giant doors. I mean, I it's one thing when you've never really had to do it and you got to sit down and devote a third of a page to some city street backgrounds and you've never really done it. And you don't know where's the sidewalk, where's trash cans, where's street lamps. Where's rubble and degree and paper? Where's people running around panicking and screaming? Where are cars being flipped over? Where's the fucking city in the background? Where's rocks and pavement exploding off the ground? Where's anything? This is like terrible. Almost as terrible as the background shapes just in the background there, but that's all right. So they're still fighting the bad guy. He zaps up there, just barely nicks their nicks her nipple. He's into her. So this is how he does some foreplay, just like tickle tickle with the laser. She's falling. He catches her. He has some. Uh, she's unconscious. She's been grazed. Our luck's not gonna hold out forever. So he balls up his fist, and this his layout is like it's like the center of the page is separating each one of these two characters. So it's almost like. This is its own separate image, and that's its own separate image, but doing a big old decking the shit out of him, sending him flying, but it just reads weird. Enough is enough, really. <clears throat> but he's trying. He's going for it. More crazy background. Suddenly this genocide guy, he just he's down by just a couple of punches. That was it. That's the super villain. He's down. They're talking. They're talking. They're talking. Um... Man, Battlestone's just, like, mugging at us for some reason. Uh, K.O., did you just feel the ground move? I mean, expert marksman and uh, skilled martial artist, did you feel the ground move? And then a little rock, like, poops up. And then I guess he's just standing there amidst a bunch of smoke and, like, straight perspective lines. I guess it's supposed to be a city, right? Those are giant, giant, giant fucking windows. Where's the cars? Where's the street lamps? Where's the people? Where's where's anything? Except all this nothing. It's just, it's terrible. Terrible. 
But they're picking themselves up, and I guess the fight has to start again. So they all dive on him at one time, and it's kind of a chaotic mess, and then he just off me, you insolent maggots. Sends him flying. This guy likes just feet dangling in image there. Feet there, feet there. They're just dangling in the shot. Even what's her name down here getting zapped away. She's looking at us. She's like, she's like, get me out of this comic. Please save me. Get me out of here. This is my worst nightmare. Sorry, Thermal. Battlestone grabs him again. And then they slam him and punch him. And Atlas hammers him down, I guess. Because just bad storytelling. Just giant fist out of the panel. They slammed him down into a perfect hole in the ground, I guess. And then he comes blasting up out of the perfect hole in the ground. It's not a bad flying away drawing. It's, it's not bad. He's mad. Again, the fight continues. Again, he blasts at him. And then he starts picking up a fucking skyscraper, I guess. I mean, you tell me what he's doing. He's picking up a building. Battlestone, that building. He'll kill everyone inside, except for like the building we were in that blew up in half and killed everybody. And the other building that stupid Atlas leaned into and shattered and killed everybody. But we don't want these people to die. And so this is, again, poor storytelling. So Atlas is supposed to grow into a big guy. So here he's normal. He got these weird color vibe things going around him to show, I guess, that his body is going to start utilizing its power and transforming. And then this next panel, he's holding up a building. But the the guy is the same size in each panel. Make him small here or make him massively huge here. Dedicate half of this page to this shot of big guy holding up the building. Go smaller on all these, but he's same size, same size. So it doesn't read like, it's like he's having a seizure and then he goes up to this corner of a wall and just like starts hugging it and they're asking him what the hell's going on. But I guess they get teleported away and then... I guess this is the building collapsing, and that's his version of debris, I guess. And then he's just standing there, he's triumphant, and he's like, I'm I'm awesome, I have no ears, I'm cool. Like he teleports away, I guess. And then suddenly they're just in an arena uh, somewhere, I guess. That looks like a, I mean, what is that? Can you tell what that is? Is it like an air filter for an old engine? Um, but Brigade and Genocide, they're there somewhere. I guess it's supposed to be like an arena. And these are a bunch of people. They're all teleported there. And um, they don't even say. Suddenly they're just, they're on another planet by these ancient gods. that He just could not be fucking bothered to like, here's a head and fuck it. It's the last page. Just draw some li What the fuck just happened? These got teleported away, all of them, to somewhere? What the fuck is going on? And of course, you got letters pages with everyone just saying how great Marat Michaels is. All right. If you say so, guys. Another little short story of Infinity in the background by Richard Horry. We're not going to look at that. Again, I must reemphasize, I am not shitting on Mar Marat Michaels as a human being. Just his artwork as an extremely young man back in the day, taking a job any of us fucking would have. So... Not that I'm sure he'll never see these, and if he did, maybe he'll tell me I'm an asshole, and that would make my day. But again, here we are, issue three. So we got, what, giant space gods with giant fucking cod pieces sticking in our faces, I guess. The paper quality has kind of gone up. The clarity of the coloring seems a little bit clearer. I don't know if it, shows, if it looks any different on camera, but to me it looks a little bit more brighter. I um, wanted to point out, I was looking at when these were published. So issue two, October of 92... This is February of 93. So holy shit. Like three, four months in between. Like, all right. Anyway, Space Gods, the Imperial High Council. Um, oh my God. Liefeld and his bullshit names. The Crimes Against the Crown Prince. Genocide. J apostrophe N I S S Y D E. And as a consequence, you will die. 
No, you will die. Once again, another double page spread of the team standing there looking awesome. And because we've got a big guy in the background, all we're going to get is a big close-up of his diaper with his giant fucking dick inside it, because that's all we can do. But we're not only going to draw his forelegs, you know, his thighs, they just kind of disappear at the knees. So, again, if you didn't know what the fuck you're looking at, why, why, what? His head's misshaped, misplaced, and they're not standing on any kind of ground. There's no dirt, there's no stone, there's no rubble. They're just standing in a... Generic background with a bunch of smoke. Okay. All right. So Battlestone starts telling him off and like, silence, you'll speak only when spoken to. And then... What is going on? I actually have no idea. Why is this little person flashing? What What is going on? I don't understand. And whatever. So Battlestone starts mugging at us again. And they're like, all right, team, we're out of here. Let's charge. So they take off. And I guess Thermal starts blasting a perfect circle hole in the wall. All right, get out of here. Some of them are being chased by soldiers. Stop them. Whatever, Use whatever means you have to stop them. But get them. So the team, they got to figure out how they're going to get away from these space gods. Like there was a... They started out their day with like... Stopping some terrorists in a city, and now they're like on another planet. And five seconds later, they're just running from some weird space god things. I do not know what's going on, and neither do the team, and neither do the guys who made the book. No backgrounds, hot girl flying around, pointy helmet guy punching. This guy's just standing there, pointing, doing just whatever's. Just. It's also bland. No backgrounds, no backgrounds, no backgrounds. I guess at some point, <clears throat> I guess she's trying to laser a hole in the ground. So she cuts a perfect, flawless, perfect circle into the ground. And then look at the backgrounds. Like if they're going underground, you can't even make it black. You can't put some rocks and some water and some debris and some rubble. You just draw like a circle in the sky and you said, I'm done. That is just ridiculous. So now they're running off. Meanwhile, above ground, the bad guys are gathering and the, the space gods are like, we got to send some good people after these guys. So there's always the factor. The factor. The tunnels. They're running around. <laughs> Somewhat later. <laughs> good, good writing, guys. So they, they get away underground and there's just like, bricks and rocks and then they're sitting in somewhere and they got a fire going because they're a team on issue three that were so invested in them as characters and who they are and what they've done all they've done is fucking fight and scream at each other we don't know anything about them this is really stupid <clears throat> so they're just sitting around a fire talking about their options but then they oh shit some people are coming to get us we hear sounds battlestone travels off in there and finds a there's a giant lizard He's like, there's two or three guys running out there at most. Fucking lizard. Yeah, well, it's actually a fucking lizard. There it is. And it chops at him. It suddenly seems like it shrinks down. He seems massive there. He kind of shrinks down and cuts him across his chest. But then the team, who we told to get lost, they show up because you can tell the Thermal's titties are in the scene. And no backgrounds, no dark underground rubble. He's in a set, he, they're in a setting that's the easiest thing to draw. They're underground in like a sewer. So just make it black and draw some steam and smoke and some rubble and some rocks. But he just, he just can't do it. He just can't do it. Anyway, let's fight, team. Point and fight and shoot. Here comes fucking Lizard. And, um... Jesus... I guess Fire Lady is coming up and he farts on her? Is that what happened? <laughs> Dude, what's wrong? She's like, I'm I can't stop him. He farted on me. He's like, well, we better do something. I bet we need to fight some more. Um, I, I don't even know what's going on. Suddenly there's like these cavernous, rocky backgrounds. They're not underground anymore. So they're fighting f fucking Lizard and... What's his name? Seahawk gets punched away. 
So Battlestone's got a grimace at us and talk some shit and hey, hey, Iceman, use your ice powers. He's like, oh yeah, I totally forgot that I could do that. I could solve all kinds of problems. God, if only I remembered that fucking ice powers. So Battlestone... Kubax? Kubax? Is that what that is? He punches him. I guess so did they freeze fucking Lizard and then he punched him to pieces? I don't know because it doesn't show you. You think this is, again, underground cavernous backgrounds, rocks, shattering ice, blood and guts. You got all the easy shit to draw and they didn't do any of it. Again, he's a brand new artist. He's trying to figure this shit out. Oh, we got cards. Seahawk and Cold Snap and expert marksman and skilled martial artist. Native in Japan, the man called Kao is one of the world's f most formidable martial artist experts. In a short time as a member of Brigade, he has proved himself to be able an able second in command to his old friend and fighting partner, Battlestone, as well as a cunning and resourceful fighter. I bet. His name is Hiroshi Kuramoto. Thanks, dude. So, anyway, the central control tower of the Imperial High Council. Some space skyscrapers. And they're like... What? They've gotten away. Um, you know what? Who gives a fuck? These are new characters that have been on the screen for, on the pages for like four pages and we're supposed to give a shit. I don't give a shit. I do give a shit that they're underground and then suddenly they come up through a sewer, I guess. Alien planet has sewers like Earth and it's a perfect little round manhole. But like, look at the backgrounds there. Look at, the, he's like, look at Battlestone. He's wearing a sombrero. That's supposed to be him coming up, pushing like a, a lid open, but he just could not be bothered to draw it. And girls peeking up through the shadows. She's like, help me, get me out of here, please. Get me out of this comic. But, you know, Battlestone's digging a sombrero. But there just happens to be a hole in the ground in the middle of the bad guy's super advanced technological fortress. And they just happen to come out of the ground right fuck Jesus Christ. They jump out. They immediately get v -zacked. <clears throat> oh, and then there's some bad guys. They are the Factor. They say, that was merely a warning shot, Terrans. By order of the blah, 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 you're to be t placed into custody. The choice is yours. You can surrender to us now with honor or suffer defeat at the hands of the Factor. And Battlestone's like, buddy, I don't think you know who you're messing with. We spent two and a half issues standing around looking pissed and then lunging ourselves at people to fight them. And you're next. Don't think we won't. So, they're like, Atlas, get big and beat him up. So just, I guess, suddenly he's giant because then suddenly this guy's punching him. I guess? I don't know. Now we've got more new characters. So we've had Brigade. We barely know him. He fought, they fought a bunch of terrorists. We didn't know them. Then they had Genocide, supposed to be a big, awesome villain. They fought him for a minute. He's gone. Where is he? Who is he? Then we had these space gods, you know, with their dicks in our face. Oh, I just popped my cover off my comic. Oh, I'm so mad because it's so valuable. Now you've got the Factor. These assholes that have shown up. we got new characters to ca not care about at all here. This is so stupid. An eight-year-old wrote this comic. Um, this chick, whoever she is, she fires fire and ice. So we got fire and ice, but she could do it all herself. And she knocks them out. Ice to the fire lady, fire to the ice guy. This is stupid. And then some other big guys just decking him. And she's trying to use her stasis powers. And he walks up and just fingers her and she's into it. So she's down for the count. So it's just Battlestone again. You know, Battlestone's got to be awesome again. Punching and oh yeah, this guy apparently his name is Knockdown. Knockdown enough. Ugh, the mullet on this asshole. Just more character you don't give a shit about. But they're gathering him up and Battlestone's like, God, we fought so many people today. I don't, I, I don't even know where we're at. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Boom, an explosion. Look, <clears throat> more characters. It doesn't even say who these guys are. Now there's more people. Four more characters. Like Sumo Wolverine and Archangel and Girl Archangel and Golden Archangel. Who the fuck are these guys? What in the fuck is going on with this comic book? 
This is so stupid all over the place. Hey, here's a good drawing. Thank God. Thank you, Jay Lee. Can't believe my comic popped apart on me. It's so valuable. Jesus Christ. Issue four, Brigade, Fatal Finale. Yeah, we all kind of want to die. It feels like it's really higher end glossy paper. Oh yeah, we got to check out when this was published. So this one, February of 93 was issue three. July of 93. Holy shit, the space in between. But again, we got more characters. They are the birds of prey. Really? I don't read DC Comics, so who's in the birds of prey? I mean, it's just all chicks. Batwoman and Harley and I'm sure another bat-related person and probably another bat-related person. <laughs> Whatever. They are the birds of prey. So we've got Brigade and Genocide and the Magistrate, Space Gods, and the f four... What were they called? No. Who are those assholes? The Factor. And now we got the Birds of Prey. We're, issue, we're on issue four, and we don't know fucking anything about our characters. Nothing. But they keep throwing all these things at us. Rob Leifeld, creator, plot... Merritt, My Merritt Michaels, co-plotter. You guys' heads are straight up your fucking ass. <clears throat> Backgrounds, be fucking damned. They are not going to be here. Big giant nothing. Oh, the Birds of Prey are here to help you, they say, but Battlestone's not having it, so he decks them. I guess cooler heads prevail. I don't know. I don't, if, if I ever read this, I don't fucking know. And then s somewhat later, <laughs> they love that. They're like, you know, is somewhat later. Battlestone is standing with his foot up on a line holding a crowbar. I mean, right? Is that what he's doing? And the storytelling is talking back and forth, dramatic face, and then just like, flex your arms. Like, where are they? What's going on? What kind of environment are they in? Are they in space? Are they on some gladiatorial planet? Are they on Mars? Are they in Las Vegas? Who the fuck knows? But we got a big shot of their arms. Cool. Oh, shit. We've got to flip the page over. So now... If, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Flexing arms, and you hear a boom, a sound effect. So Brigade and the Birds of Prey, they all get together, and they say, the bad guys have found us. I'm like, did they? Is that what's going on? Man, this girl, she wants out of this book so fucking bad. She's like, save me. Get me out of here, please. Look at this thing around my neck. It's what controls me. I can't get away. If I try to remove it, it will blow up and explode my head. Get me out of here, please. I'll sleep with you. Get me out. Get me out. Anyway, sorry. I'm trying to make it interesting because this is not. Is this still Brian Murray fucking with the colors? Yes. It's very bright. Anyway, so a bunch of generic bullshit soldiers show up. This panel should be flipped, honestly, because these guys look like they're going this way, you know. They're roughly speaking, not coming at you, but they're kind of going this way. So can so to kind of go with the flow, the heroes should be over here going this direction with the bad guys, that, whatever. Weird backgrounds, wherever they are, punching, fighting, standing around, looking cool, punching, fighting, ninja punching, fighting... Golden bird dude, bird dudes doing what, I don't know, whatever they do. Who the fuck are they? We don't even know. Who cares? They're talking, they're talking. Lord Magistrate, another caped asshole we don't know anything about. Genocide here, we don't know anything about him. The team standing around gritting their teeth. That best hand ever drawn. Right there. It's rough. It's rough, guys. So they go into some other room, and there's more generic soldiers. After fighting, like, gods and monsters and super-powered beings, they're just fighting generic soldiers. Now, look, all these heroes here are standing on this flat surface. But if you look, all the bad guys are sinking into the ground. Did you need me, Baba? Sorry, delay. I thought my son was at my door. 
He's probably asking, wondering what the hell daddy's doing behind the door. He's just out there playing video games. Anyway, but like, seriously, look at this. It's like their feet are dissolving and they're sinking into the ground. Like seriously, or they're like 12 inches tall. Because it kind of looks like this dude is standing amidst and underneath them. This shit's hard to get figured out if you don't know how to do it. I'm no expert, so fuck me. What do I know? <sighs> oh my god. Battlestone is jumping into battle again. I guess genocide's there. Say your prayers, genocide, because I'm taking you down. I guess. And so he... Is this genocide? Is he like, like laser coming on him? Like, look at him. He's like, he's holding his dick, shooting him down. He's into it. I don't know what's going on. He pushes a button. The trap door opens up underneath Battlestone, right? He's standing here. Okay. Storytelling. It follows. It tracks. Ground opening. A pit. He yells, no. Genocide! As he falls. He's way down the pit, right? So he's got a... Is he going to fall to his death? Is he... What? How? What's going to happen? Well, it's just... Is he still falling? And then suddenly he's just out. And he says some shit and then he's tackling, genocide's tackling him. So he got out of the fucking hole in the ground somewhere, I guess. Oh my God. And then sort of a straight on shot of bad guy and then a down shot on Battlestone. They're punching, they're fighting, they're saying some shit. So we're fighting genocide now? Where's the factor? Where's the birds of prey? Where's the alien guys? Look at this terrible, like, you couldn't come up with a better, you know, where you don't just draw, like, this nose and gritting teeth with this hand, and they're barely even, like, gripping at each other. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this shit. Look at his thumb, how it just disappears from his hair. Like, it just forgot to draw it in. And they're like, that's not like fingers grasped in like a, like when you're grabbing somebody and you're trying to fight each other. This is like, hey, baby. Yeah. You know, we should get together later. And then I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know what's happening here. I guess bad guy's charging up his laser fist. Exploding walls. Yeah, what is going on? Can you, can you even tell? And do you even care at this point? I don't know what happened here, but somehow Battlestone got his forearms webbed up by Spider-Man. I mean, right? And they're covered in blood. So maybe he got them chopped off. I don't know what the fuck is going on or why they thought that was a thing. What is going on? What is he trying to do there? It's terrible. And I remember, so here, you got bad guy charging up his hand. He's going to do some evil shit. Now, these comics were sold as, this is a new team of awesome heroes. Get ready for the awesome, like, new team of heroes. It'll be the future of comics, like Youngbloods and the Wildcats and the Brigades. And every team has its, you know, its gruff leader, which in all of Liefeld comics, they were just cable clones. And then there's the, 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 the animalistic guy and the gun guy and the hot girl with long hair and the hot girl with short hair. And there's always a big strong guy, you know, it's supposed to be like Colossus or it's supposed to be like the thing or the Hulk. It's a major character. And in issue four of Brigade, the miniseries, bad guy charges up his laser, um, stupid bird dude dives, out, he gets battle, so knocks him out of the way. But the laser, even though it's traveling this way, and then suddenly they draw it traveling that way, and it hits Atlas, the guy you barely know who said barely three words, and he drops fucking dead. And they touted this as a major horrific revelation happens in issue four. A major character will die. So you read this and you go, oh, him? Um, was I supposed to care? He said three words in the entire book. We know nothing. And I mean fucking nothing about him except he's the strong guy on Brigade. And the strong guys in every one of these superhero comics always gets the short end of the stick. There's no characterization. They're just big dummies in the background to punch things. And he gets shot and he's dead. And they were screaming mad. So they go charging. Battlestone's pissed off because this guy we don't know is dead. Who cares? Weird 
ground thing, bad guys showing up. Was there any penciling assist in this? I gotta look. Um, I don't know. Things just started looking a little Jeff matsuda y over here. Anyway, bad guys. He's pissed off genocide. He's gonna kill him, but then birds of prey guys. No. I understand your anger, but I can't let you do this. I swear to you that we'll see that he gets. And he's like, no, I have to kill him. But no, you got to be a good man. Whatever. I guess the they, the birds of prey guys are like, we're on your team. And more bad guys, more generic soldiers who you should be able to defeat easily. They're coming. We'll hold them off. We're survivors. Hey, you guys get your board, yourselves aboard that ship. Like, what ship? What sh Are they in a ship? Are they in a place where there is a spaceship? Does it even look like there's a fucking spaceship? But Battlestone's on. is like, crank this puppy up. We're going home. Say no more. And suddenly they're on a spaceship flying through space. And then... But they're in space, right? See the stars in the background? But there's a... There's a door. And so they're like, um, I'm trying to like... The, the birds of prey manage to take out the locking mechanism. And the door starts cracking and then whoosh, they make it out. Like, no ship. It's nothing there. But then they're on it and it just only shows the two of them. Then they're in space. And then there's a giant door that opens that they barely make it out of. What the fuck is going on? So they're zipping around the last couple of them in this weird ship. And then he's standing there trying to look awesome again. And... He's lamenting that Atlas is dead, and she's like, it wasn't your fault. He's like, Atlas was my responsibility. That makes it my fault. Trying to be all dramatic. Big, giant splash page of their faces. Like, you didn't even see any of these. Most of these other fuckers in the background. They weren't in the fight. You didn't see him jumping on a ship. They're not even on this page at all. Are they on the previous page? No, they're not on the previous page. Are they on this page? No, they're not on this page at all. Are they on this page? There's a couple of them. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages without these characters, and they're just there. I mean, of course they're getting on the same ship, but... <sighs> and then no backgrounds, just colors. This girl really, really wants out of her. They both do. He really, really wanted to do some cheek cross-hatching. He got it. Atlas died needlessly, but I. But can I do anything less than ensure he didn't die in vain? They're talking like we give a shit. And then epilogue. Government guys talking, and they're like, oh, we got a task force. We need to take down Brigade. We're going to send Blood Strike, which we've reviewed that book. And that's the end of it. That was fucking terrible. Everything about these books was terrible. There was nothing good here. Again, I've said this before. If you have good memories of this, I'm not trying to take away your enjoyment of them. But for real, they suck. Even at the time, like, Youngblood was better than this. Wildcat, Cyberforce, Shadowhawk, all of those books by the original image creators were better than this. From not just a story perspective, uh, but an art perspective. Now, this is just a young guy given a first-time task to draw these things. So it's kind of understandable and forgivable. And again, he's become a really good artist, in my opinion. You know, he's, he's no, you know, Dave Gibbons, but, you know, he's pretty damn good. He had to start somewhere. He had to learn. He had to grow. But these comics are terrible. It's just god awful. It's just the worst. So, again, if you like him, I, I appreciate it. I dig it. Good for you. You know, I, I'm not here to... I mean, I'm a nobody. I can't remove your joy of these books. If you like them, you like them. But it's a bunch of colorful garbage. I mean, this is worse than the Liefeld crap that I shit on. Because Liefeld, for all his artistic failings, has an energy and a vibe and a dramatic something that just works and at least pulls you in. And these are terrible. But forgetting, like I said, I'm going to repeat myself, even forgetting... It's a brand new artist from a story perspective. It is just, it's just kind of relying on you kind of assigning your, your memories and understandings of previous comics from Marvel or DC that you've read for years and years and years. 
and they have all these backstories and they kind of are trying to adopt and just take that kind of like back history of an existing running storyline of characters and just interject it into a brand new book of characters without earning it, without building up their own characters and backstory and making you give a shit. Can you tell me anything about any of these characters on a personal level? Again, you got pointy guy and you got ice guy and you got hot fire girl and you got leader that's just cable. There's nothing here. It's unreadable trash. But we were all children when we read it and we all loved it. Anyway, gone on for an hour. I kind of figured it would take that long if I'm going to rip on four issues of this stuff. So I guess that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And see you next time.